So good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining me for this Plans Express Software Skills fully funded software and training uh, scheme course. Um, as I said before, my name's Olivia. Um, I'm one of the trainers at HPXL. Uh, I train on Plans Express as well as Estimator Express. So just a couple of PowerPoint slides and then we'll get stuck in um, with the software itself. So this, this first slide just shows um, what Plans Express can create for you. Um, it obviously takes a little bit of uh, practice and training at the start to develop your drawing skills, but this is the kind of design work um, that you could be doing potentially for your clients, whether it's new build or extensions or loft conversions you do. Uh, these are the kind of 3D visuals you can end up sharing with your clients. So um, I'm guessing you're here um, for a few reasons or from uh, because of a few of these reasons listed here. So all of you, I'm sure, are keen to use your time off site uh, in a positive and constructive way. Um, Perhaps you want to use technology to help make your business more resilient going forwards to put yourself in a stronger position. And perhaps you want to stand out from the crowd in what we know is going to be an increasingly competitive environment. So you want to, you want to have that edge that differenti differentiates you from the competition. So the whole idea of the fully funded software and training scheme is that we want to help our firms become more profitable in the future. And um, with this Plans Express software skills training, I'm hoping uh, that you will see how you can begin to offer an in-house design service if you're not doing that already, or perhaps offer an enhanced in-house design service. I'm going to show you how you can draft planning and building reg standard plans and elevations using Plans Express. And ultimately, how you can create really impressive 3D visuals that you can share with your clients. So a quick overview of the course structure. Um, this is the first time we have run this course in this particular format. So um, this is the rough roadmap that we, we may, if we get through more content in the first module, we might start on module two today. Um, it depends on the pace that we're working at um, and what we think we can get through. Um, but basically we're gonna start in module one looking at basic drawing skills. So we're gonna start from the ground up um, I'm going to start by showing you how you use your mouse and your keyboard to draw with Plans Express. I'm going to show you how you can draw construction lines. And then in module two, we will um, draw the ground floor plans of a design. So we'll be drawing external and internal walls, placing doors and windows, uh, inserting stairs, and the slab. And we'll look at how we can navigate the 3D view. Uh, in module three, we will um, be creating an additional story for our design and we'll look at how we can draw the roofs. And module four is all about adding detail to the plans. So we'll draw the 2D elevations. We'll add some dimension lines and labels um, to add, add those details in. So that's the, uh, that's the plan for what we'll cover during the course of uh, the training sessions over the next couple of weeks. So the idea is that we will work through drawing a detached house, complete with elevations and a 3D model. I'll show you how to do a task, so I'll demonstrate how to do something and uh, give you the time to do it. It may be that you can do it alongside me, at, you know, at the same time. It may be that I give you a little bit of time at the end of uh, the demonstration to um, continue doing what I've demonstrated. Please, please ask questions as we go along. Um, on GoToWebinar, there is a questions section where you can type questions to me. Um, if you can't see it already, there's a GoToWebinar control panel. It might be pinned to the side of your screen. If you click the orange button with an arrow on, that will expand the GoToWebinar control panel. Within there, there's a section called questions. If you click on that, click on the arrow where it says questions. And then in there, there's a, a, a text box that you can type into. So if you could just find that, type in hello so I know that you've located it and I know you've got a means of communicating with me and it also um, demonstrates that you can hear me okay which is always good to know. I've got my first hello. Hello, good morning Paul.
just giving the others a moment. Make sure they found it. So um, just to recap, in case I gave those instructions too quickly, GoToWebinar has um, a bar that's sometimes pinned to the side of your screen, a gray bar. And at the top of there, there's an orange button with an arrow. If you click on that, that brings up the GoToWebinar control panel. And um, within there, there's a section called questions. Click on the triangular arrow on questions. That will expand the question box. If you can type hello or something in there for me, then I'll know you found it. It may be you're just not feeling chatty this morning. <laughs> That's OK. Um, just give you guys a moment or two in case you're dealing with something else. Sometimes you've got to go up and answer the phone, haven't you? Or there's an urgent email to respond to or something. Okay, Dex, I'll continue on. So as I say, you're very welcome to ask questions as we go along. If there's something I need to repeat or clarify or expand on, it's absolutely no trouble. I will try and answer your questions as I see them. We'll also have time for questions and answers at the end of the session. Um, and we will end each module with a mini quiz. So just a few questions that recap um, some of the key learning points from, um, from that day's module. OK. Um, so hopefully you have received a document called Plans Express Software Skills Supporting Documents. Um, that contains some house plans. Um, for the design that we're going to work through in the training. It contains what we call a shortcut key guide that, that tells you about some of the shortcut keys that we use. And it also has some diagrams to help you complete the exercises that we're working through. So ideally, um, you'll have that printed next to you on your desk um, so that you can easily refer to it during the training. Failing that, if you've just got it open on screen so you can click and refer to it that will be helpful it gives some dimensions that we'll need when placing certain um, elements of the design so please make sure you you've got that and, and can see it okie dokes so that's the end of the powerpoint and we'll get started with plans express i'll open it up on my screen so we're starting with module one of course so in module one we're going to start with some basic drawing skills which are essential for using Plans Express effectively. I'll show you how you can select an appropriate drawing template, and then I will give you a quick tour of um, the Plans Express screen. During the module, I'm hoping that you'll learn how you can use the mouse to select items, to navigate around the drawing page, and to draw architectural items. I'm also hoping that you'll learn how you can use some of the keyboard shortcut keys to really speed up your drawing. And I'll show you how you can set out construction lines. OK, so when you first open your software. Bear with me a second, because your software will look like this. So the new drawing dialog box opens up. Um, this contains various drawing templates which you can select. The drawing templates control the page size, its scale, and its orientation, as you can see. And they also, um, some of them also contain notes blocks, which you can use to fill in your company details, drawing details, and so on. So for our um, training design, we're going to select the A1, 1 to 50 plain page option. So the third one down in the list. Just a quick note on um, selecting your drawing template. If you are importing some plans um, that you've already got, so if you want to do a takeoff from your plans, for example, um, the best thing to do is to match your page size and scale to this, the size and scale of the drawing that you're importing into Plans Express. Then you don't have to worry about rescaling uh, anything. But we're drawing from scratch, so of course you can select whichever template is most uh, appropriate for you. But as I say, we're going to use the uh, A1 1 to 50 plain page template. Once you've selected it, click OK. 
and Plans Express will select, select and open up that template for you. At the bottom of the screen, just here, you can see the page size and you can see um, the scale. So if at any point you wanted to change the page size or scale, you can just double click uh, on either thing where it says size or scale. That will open this page dialog box. So from here, you could select a different page si size or a different scale. So you're not um, fixed in the particular um, template settings that you've selected. You can change those um, options at any point. So I'll cancel out of that for now because we don't want to make any changes. OK, so we've opened our drawing. I'm now going to show you how you can save your drawing, because obviously uh, when you're working hard on your plans, the worst thing is if um, your computer crashes or something and you lose all that work. So we recommend regular saving of, of your drawings to avoid um, that scenario. So to save your drawing, the top left of the screen, you'll see the file menu. So it's a pinky colored button and it's got like a, a drawing sorry not a drawing a um a document icon on it if you click on that that is the file menu if you hover your cursor over where it says save then you'll get this menu on the right here so we want to click save as if we select the save as option it allows us to um, give the drawing a name that we select so i've created a folder called training plans i'm going to save all of my plans into that folder you might want to cr create a similar folder on your computer where you save all of your drawings and I'm going to give this a name I'm going to say this house is called Upton Fields and I'm going to give this drawing a number I'm going to call it number one because what I'm going to do every time I save I'm going to change that number so I'm going to have Upton Fields one Upton Fields two and so on so that um, I'm saving the drawing in different stages so that if I need to backtrack at any point I can uh, easily do so so give it a name. Numbering them is a really good uh, practice to get um, to get used to doing, basically. And then click Save, obviously, to save the project. You can see the drawing name um, on the tab at the bottom of your screen. So now just a quick tour of the Plans Express screen so you can orientate yourself and work out what's what and what's where. So all of the tools you need to draw your plans, they can be found on the toolbar at the top of the screen. So officially, this is called a ribbon and it has several different tabs. So along the top, you'll see we've got architectural tab, drawing and annotation tab, non-estimated symbols and so on. So each of those tabs contains several different tools. We're going to be using several of the different tabs during the course of our training. And go back to architectural. So the main part of our screen is called the drawing area. So the drawing area consists of our drawing page, but you can also draw outside of the, the, the page as well if you need to or if you want to. That's the, so all of it in total is the drawing area. Underneath the drawing area, we have got what's called the command window. So the command window basically gives instructions on how to draw or place each item. So when you're drawing something, you can refer to those instructions. They will guide you through the process. On the right hand side of your screen here, you may have your 3D preview visible, your 3D view. Um, other windows such as the notes picker might be visible. It depends on how your software is set up uh, currently. And I can show you how you can load these different windows. You might also have properties explorer tab visible there. So there's tabs at the bottom of the window that allow you to move between the different windows. So these various windows can be shown or hidden. So there's some settings that control which windows are, are visible. And those are on the views in 3D tab. So if you go to the ribbon at the top of your screen and towards the right hand side, we've got views and 3D. Now to switch on the 3D view, we've got this 3D preview button. So you can switch that on or off just by clicking 3D preview. If you're doing a really big drawing that's really memory intensive, you might want to switch the pre 3D preview off because that will help speed up your machine. We're going to leave the 3D pre preview um, on for now so we can see our drawing build up. The other window, so the notes picker, the properties explorer and so on, these can be shown or hidden using the options on the show hide um, section of the toolbar here. 
Um, I've just seen Ron. You've just popped back on. I don't know if um, anybody's having trouble with their connection at their end. Have you been having trouble, Ron? I hope I hope you've uh, managed to keep up with what's going on at this end. Um, so yeah, so if you want to switch on your notes picker, you can tick or untick the notes picker tick box as appropriate. If your command window showing the instructions goes missing, there's a tick box for that so you can switch it back on. So within that views and 3D toolbar, you can select which windows are showing at any one time. So if you can just make sure that you've got the 3D view switched on using that 3D preview button, you can click onto the 3D view tab and then your 3D view will be visible as you create your drawing. Okay, so that's just a quick intro to the Plans Express screen. So we're going to start now in exercise two with um, building up our mouse skills. So there are a few essential mouse skills that you need to master in order to be able to draw effectively in Plans Express. In this exercise, you'll practice a number of those different key mouse skills. So we're really starting with the basics. Now, uh, an important note here is that you need to have a scroll wheel on your mouse when drawing in Plans Express. So the scroll wheel is an essential tool for Plans Express. Um, that's because it allows you to um, access some different menus. It also uh, is important for being able to zoom in and out of your drawing uh, area, your, your drawing page. If you haven't got a mouse with a scroll wheel, of course, you can pick one up um, from your local supermarket, add it to your food shop, or you can get it delivered from um, any online retailer that does that kind of equipment. So make sure you've got a mouse uh, with a scroll wheel. So the first the, the first mouse skill that I want to introduce is zooming. So, of course, uh, at times you might want to zoom into your drawing page so you can do some detailed work. Um, so I'll show you how you can zoom in and out. So if you place your cursor over one corner of the drawing screen um, and then scroll the mouse wheel towards the screen, that will zoom in on the position that you've selected with your cursor. And then if you zoom away from the screen, that will zoom you back out again. So if you place your cursor on a different corner of the drawing page now, scroll your mouse wheel towards the screen, that zooms you in around that position that you've selected with your cursor. And again, scroll away from the screen to zoom back out so you can see. You can zoom a long way out and you can zoom a long way in, as far in as you need to go um, to do whatever detailed work you're doing. So using the position of the cursor and the scroll wheel on your mouse, you can zoom in and out. Another really important um, mouse skill to get is being able to drag the drawing page around. So to do that, you need to hold down your scroll wheel on your mouse. So you're pushing the scroll wheel in and you'll see this hand appears. This allows you to drag the drawing page into a different position. So hold down that mouse wheel and you can move your drawing page around. So I've just released that the, the scroll wheel. If I press it down again, the hand appears. That allows me to drag the page. This is called panning, panning around the page. So you can see you can drag the drawing page so you can move to a different part of the drawing. So those two skills in combination are really important for navigating around your drawing. So using the mouse scroll wheel to zoom in and out and using holding down the scroll wheel to drag the drawing page around. So just have a little play for a moment doing that, zooming in and out and moving the drawing page around just until you feel comfortable doing it. And then once you've had a little play around, zoom out so you can see the whole drawing page and center it into the drawing area. So you can see the uh, drawing page there is in the center of your screen. Okay, so zooming in and out, we, we use the mouse wheel, um, roll, scroll it towards the screen to zoom in, scroll it away from the screen to zoom out, and the cursor determines the position that you zoom in on or zoom out, out from. Hold down the mouse wheel to drag the drawing page around. First two really important mouse skills. 
OK, so we're now going to have a go at locating some of the different architectural elements. So to do that, we need to click the architectural tab on the ribbon at the top of the screen. So you see within the architectural tab, we've got everything starting from our external walls, internal walls. We've got doors, windows, um, openings, structural openings, and various types of steelwork. We've got stairs, various types of flooring, roofs. And we've got a tool for extending a roof. We've got attic elements, drainage, landscaping and external works electrical items, plumbing items, including pipes, um, boilers, sanitary ware, waste fixings and so on. We've got plastering, decoration, renovation, chimneys and fire stops. So this is where all of the architectural elements that you might want to draw are located. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on the external wall drop down menu and you'll see here all of the different um, types of external wall that you can draw. We're going to select the top one, the, the brick and block cavity wall. You'll see we've got a variety of different dimensional templates, basically for different um, heights of wall. Select one of them. It doesn't matter which one at this point because we are just going to um, have a go at um, drawing some walls. We're going to delete them. This is just um, this is just for practice purposes at the start. So this is the wall dimension wizard. We'll go through this in a bit more detail later on. For now, as I say, because we're just practicing our mouse skills and placing the walls, we're going to click accept defaults to accept all of the default dimensions that are in there. And we're now ready to draw our walls. Um, Plans Express tells you that it's ready to draw the walls. In the command window at the bottom, it's saying give start point. So we need to um, click to place the start point of our walls. So whenever you're drawing anything on Plans Express, you always need to remember to click and release the left mouse button. Click and release, don't hold the mouse button down. So you may, from other drawing packages, be used to uh, holding down the left mouse button and dragging it around on screen. But with Plans Express, what you need to do is click and release the left mouse button. OK. So what we're going to do anywhere in the drawing page, place your cursor and click the left mouse button to place that first point of the walls. OK. Two seconds, guys. I'm just double checking what uh, the messages I've got. OK, I've got a couple of members of the team just, just chasing up to make sure you guys are not having technical issues at your end. Um, but I will continue on as planned. OK. OK, so you can see here we are drawing our walls and the command window is telling us now to give the next point. Of course, we want to ensure these walls are straight and the really easy way to do that is to hold down the shift key on your keyboard. So press and hold down the shift key. You'll see the walls on screen are automatically um, straightened. If you move your cursor, you'll see that Plans Express is locked into drawing your walls at a 90 degree or 45 degree angle. OK, so just have a little play around with that for a moment. So when you hold down the shift key, Plans Express will draw at 90 degree or 45 degree angles, um, basically. So we've clicked to place the first point of our walls. We're holding down the shift key. And then we're going to click again with the left mouse button to place the next point on the walls. So click, and you'll see that first length of wall has been drawn. Paul, I can see you've just popped back up. Have, uh, have you been having connection problems, or did you have to pop, pop away from the computer for a reason? I, I'm hoping you can um, catch up with where we're up to. We've just selected an external wall, and we're have a, having a go at clicking and placing. Um, the walls. So we're using the shift key to um, keep our walls perpendicular at right angles um, and we're just placing the corners of our walls. Okay so the command window, the next instruction is telling us to give the next point. So again what we're going to do is hold down the shift point, uh, hold down the shift key on your keyboard, 
and then again click the left mouse button to place the next corner of your walls. So you can see we've got two sides of a rectangle now. Now you can see the instruction um, has been updated this time. It tells us we can give the next point or we can undo, close, square or escape. So it's giving us a list, list of different options. So we can just click and place the next point as we did before. We could hold down the shift key and, and click, or we can use one of the shortcut keys as listed here. What I'd like to do is show you how you can use an end point on um, another point on the drawing as a, as a reference, basically, for placing uh, a point on your walls. So if you hover your cursor over the end point where we started drawing our walls, you'll see that snap point after a moment turns pink. It starts off blue and then it turns pink. Once it turns pink, if you bring your cursor down the screen, you'll see, see a line appears connecting the, the point we're about to place with that end point that we, we hovered our cursor over. So if you hold down the shift key, that makes the line, the, the wall that we're drawing straight. The software is still holding on to that X coordinate point from that end point. And if we click the left mouse button, so this wall we've just drawn, it ends at the same point as that first wall by doing that. Okay. I will just show you how to do that once more. I'm going to delete that wall. You can um, leave your walls as they are for now. I'm going to just repeat that process so I can show you how to do it again. So we hover our cursor over the end point on the wall we drew first. It turns pink. Wait for it to, to, to turn pink. And then if I slowly move my cursor down, you'll see we've got that line connecting the first point with the point we're about to draw. Hold down the shift key to make sure that the wall we're drawing is straight and then left click to place that next point on the wall. OK, so what the software is doing there, Plans, Plans Express is using the X coordinate of this endpoint as a reference for, for placing that, that endpoint of the wall just placed there. So the command window is now saying give next point or it will give you some options uh, U to undo, C to close, S to, uh, to square your walls off or escape to end them. To end your walls, to finish them off, just click on that first end point again. I, either side of the walls, it doesn't matter. It can be the external side or the internal side click to complete the loop and once you've done that that loop of walls is finished estimate uh, sorry plans express is now saying give start point so it's asking if you want to draw another length of walls um so paul i can see you're saying you lost your connection there sorry to hear that um and i will be sending uh, the recording out to you guys so hopefully you can catch up on the um the skills that you missed there. Um, the, the couple of key mouse skills um, that I introduced were zooming. So you can zoom in and out of your screen by uh, using your scroll wheel on your mouse. So scroll towards the screen to zoom in, scroll out of the screen to zoom out. Um, Plans Express will zoom in on the location you've selected with your cursor. So that's zooming. You can also drag your drawing page around by holding down your mouse scroll wheel and moving the drawing page around. So those are the two uh, navigating skills I think you might have missed uh, when you got checked out or go to webinar. Okay, um, so because Plans Express is ready to start drawing the next wall, it says give start point, um, what we can do is press the escape key on our keyboard. When you press the escape key, Plans Express will drop whatever drawing tool you've got or whatever action you're doing, it will drop it. So escape is the way of finishing whatever um, drawing tool you're using. I should just say um, the walls we're drawing at the moment are solid walls. They might look slightly different on your screen. Um, that's because we have two different drawing modes. If you go to the views in 3D tab, click views in 3D. In there, there's a button called toggle drawing mode that allows you to switch between sketch mode and detail mode. So at the moment, we're in sketch mode. That's the um, that gives us these solid walls. If you click toggle drawing mode, that will give us detail mode. So that shows us the hatching for the different leaves. It shows the foundations on there as well. So as you're drawing, you probably want to draw in sketch mode. 
Um, but when you've got your finished plans and you want to print them out, then you may want to switch to detail mode. But that's the button you need to switch between the different modes. So that's sketch mode. Um, when the uh, software is hatching your walls, that obviously takes um, more effort on the, the software's part to draw all those tiny lines. So if you want your software to run more quickly, uh, sketch mode is, is the way to do it. So click back to um, sketch mode if you're not already on it. And we'll carry on with our um, mouse skills. If at any point um, you make a mistake or you want to undo something you've already done, then you can click the undo arrow. So at the very top of the screen, we have got um, this arrow pointing to the left. That's the undo arrow. So if you click undo, you can undo the last thing you've done. So in this case, it's undoing the last wall I've drawn. You can undo anything. If you just deleted something and you think, no, I actually still need that, you can click the undo button and it will bring it back. And you can um, click undo several times to undo several things you've just done. There's also a redo button, so that's the arrow pointing to the right. If you click the redo button, it will bring back the things you've just undone. So those buttons are quite handy if uh, you realise you want to go back a step or you want to redo something that you've just removed. The undo redo arrows there are at the top of the screen, so use them as you need to. OK, so now just want to talk about selecting an item. So we've obviously drawn our walls. They're on screen now. Um, if we want to select them, so if I want to select a wall, I can click on it using the left mouse button. You might want to zoom in, so um, scroll the mouse wheel towards the screen to zoom in on the wall if you want to, and then click the le left mouse button to select it. So you'll see when an item is selected, it appears with dashed lines, and you get these little boxes on it, which we call handles. So we can see that wall has been selected. Those handles can be used to move and modify an item. You can, of course, also select multiple items. So if you wanted to select two walls, you can um, click the control, sorry, hold down the control key on your keyboard and then uh, left click again to select an additional item. So hold down the control key, click on an, addi an additional item and it will be added to the selection group. So just have a play around with doing that for a moment. Click on the wall to select it. Hold down the control, click control key, click on another wall to select it. So in that way, you can select multiple items. If you want to, you can zoom in and out at this point. It doesn't affect the selection. You can hold down your scroll wheel to drag the page around. Again, that doesn't affect the selection. So if there's something in a different part of the screen you need to select, you can zoom out, drag the drawing page around and select another item as you need to. There's another way of um, selecting multiple items as well. So if you click anywhere else on the drawing page, it will drop that selection. So just click, click on an empty area of screen. So if you want to select multiple items, you can draw a selection box. So if I place my cursor above and to the left of our walls here, hold down the left mouse button. So I'm clicking and holding down that left mouse button. If I move my cursor down and to the right, you'll see this bluey purple selection box appears. Only items which are fully enclosed within the box will be selected. So if I um, draw this selection box partly over the walls, as I've done here, only any, uh, only any walls which are entirely within that selection box will be selected. So I'm going to release the left mouse button now. And you'll see only that top wall was entirely enclosed by my selection box. So only that one has been selected. Click off screen again. This time I'm going to repeat drawing that selection box and I'm going to encompass all of, the, all of the walls now. So click and hold down the left mouse button. Drag your cursor, keeping that left mouse button held down. Fully enclose all of the walls, then release your left mouse button. And you'll see that all of the walls have been selected there. So that's when you do a left to right selection box. It will only select things which are entirely enclosed by the box. So click on a 
blank area of screen again. This time we're going to do a right to left selection box. So this is a different selection tool. If you start at the bottom right, click and hold down your left mouse button and drag it up and to the left, you'll see this time you get a green selection box. Now this does something different. Um, the right to left selection box will select any item which is partially or entirely included within your selection box. So if you release the left mouse button with some of the walls partially enclosed, you'll see that those walls have been selected. So a right to left selection box will select any item which is uh, partially or fully enclosed by the selection box. So in different circumstances, those di different selection boxes are um, handy for, for different purposes. OK, so just to show you one more time, left to right selection box only selects items which are fully enclosed. Right to left selection box will select anything which is touching that selection box, basically, that you have drawn. OK. And of course, you can just left click to select individual items. Or if you want to be really specific about what you're selecting, you can click on an item and then hold down the control key and select another item. So I know we're taking really baby steps here, but these are the things that you will be doing day in, day out once you um, get up and running and using the software um, day to day. OK, so those are some of the mouse, the key mouse skills that I wanted to show you. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to finish by deleting this box. So if you choose whichever selection, selection box you'd like to use, select all of the walls. Um, and to delete an item, we can press the delete key on your keyboard. So it might be the Dell key, might be delete are labeled slightly differently, but click that button and it will delete your walls. Okay, Dex. So now we're going to move on to exercise three. Exercise three is all about using shortcut keys in your drawing. So we've started to use a couple of shortcut keys as we've gone along. We've used the delete key for deleting items. We've used the escape key for ending whatever action it is um, that you're doing. And um, We've used the, sh the shift key as well for keeping our walls perpendicular when we're drawing them. So exercise three will build on those mouse skills and it will introduce a number of other shortcut keys that will speed up your drawing further. You may, you may find it useful to have the Plans Express drawing shortcut key guide um, to hand. So you might want to print that out, have it on your desk whenever you're using Plans Express as a, qu as a quick reference guide. So on there, for example, you can see um, the shift key. It gives an explanation of what the shift key does and how to use it. And it will it does the same for all the different shortcut keys. OK, so we're going to have another go at drawing our walls using um, the shift key to keep the walls at right angles. So on the architectural tab, click back on the architectural tab. And then click on the icon at the top of the external wall drop down menu. So you'll see the external walls menu is broken into two sections. There's where it says externals, external and the drop down arrow there. And at the top, there's an icon. If you click the icon, Plans Express will select the same type and specification of wall that you previously selected. So if you are um, wanting to draw another length of wall, which is exactly the same spec as one that you've already drawn, click on the icon. And what that does, that saves you going through the dimensions wizard again and having to um, check you're happy with the dimensions. You can just click directly on the icon. Plans Express will remember your previously drawn external wall spec. OK, so that will save you time clicking that button. OK, so I'm going to zoom out slightly, locate where I am. And I'm going to draw another rectangle of wall. So I'm going to start on the top left. and Remember, we click and release the left mouse button to, to place the first point on our walls. Always with the software, click and release. Now the command window is telling us what to do. Now it's saying give the next point. Remember, hold down the shift key on your keyboard. Move your cursor to where you want to place the next uh, corner on your walls. 
and then click the left mouse button to press uh, to place the next corner of your walls. Draw the second side of the rectangle in the same way, so holding down that shift key, positioning the next corner of the walls and left clicking to place it. OK, so hopefully you're becoming a bit more confident doing that. So now I want to teach you a shortcut key uh, for finishing off these walls. You can see the command window is prompting you again here that you can give the next point or it's saying you can press the S key to square off your walls. So this indicates um, that you can um, finish your walls, square them off um, and Plans Express will complete the walls by joining them up to the starting point. So pressing the S key works when you want to draw the final two perpendicular walls of a building. So press the S key on your keyboard and you'll see without any more effort on your part, Plans Express has finished off those walls. So the S key joins the walls up to the starting point via the shortest perpendicular, the shortest right angled route. OK, so whatever it is you're drawing, whether you're just drawing lines or whether it's walls, you can press that S key to finish off what you're drawing via the shortest right angled route. OK, after you press the S key, Plans Express will assume that you've finished drawing the walls and it's automatically dropped the drawing, the wall drawing tool. So, so far we have drawn our walls just by uh, clicking and placing. We don't actually know the length of those walls, the dimensions of those walls. So another way that you can set out your walls is by entering the length of each wall. And to do this, you'll use the arrow keys on your keyboard which you can find usually they're at the bottom right of your keyboard. So to draw the same type of wall again, we can either click on the external wall icon at the top or another uh, quick way that you can draw the same thing you've just drawn is to click the right mouse button. So whatever you've draw just drawn, if you click the right mouse button, Plans Express will get ready to draw the same thing again. So in this case, it's going to draw another brick and block cavity wall with the chosen specification. If you want to draw a brick and block cavity wall with a different specification, you'll need to go back to the architectural tab, click on the external wall drop down menu and select your spec of, of wall that way. So this is only if you want to draw a wall with, with identical specifications to the one you've just drawn. So you can see from the command window that Plans Express is ready to draw again. It's prompting us to give the start point of our walls. So what we're going to do, let's draw a, another rectangle of walls just to the right of the first one. So it doesn't matter exactly where you're placing it. Again, just click the left mouse button to place the first point of your walls. So let's say we now want to place the next point to the right, as we have before, but we want to input the dimensions of this wall. So what we need to do is click the right arrow key on your keyboard. So when you press the right arrow key, that's telling Plans Express the next point of the walls is to the right of the one we've just drawn. So you can see in the distance um, input box there, you can type in the length of the wall in millimetres. So let's type in 10,500 millimetres. So the software is working in millimetres by default. So once you've typed in the length of the wall, you can click OK or you can press the return key on your keyboard, which is what I tend to do because it's it's quicker. And um, because I'm already typing in the dimensions, I can then click the return key or sometimes it's called the enter key. And that registers the dimension. So Plans Express has worked out where that next point on the walls is and automatically drawn it for you. So now we can continue in this way to draw our walls using the arrow keys. So if we press the down arrow key again, the distance dialog box pops up write the length of the wall let's say it's eight and a half meters so 8500 so we're typing in a what, what's called a free input here you can also um, work it in brick lengths so you could select the brick length input and type in the number of bricks which in this case would be would it be about 40 bricks i think so you can work that way and um, there's some more to options here depending on and um, what the walls joining, whether you need less one width of mortar or equal or if you need to add one on, you can do it to that level of detail. 
So you can type in the number of bricks or you can just write the length of the wall in here. So I'm going to I'm going to type in the length of the wall. It doesn't matter which way we do it because we're just practicing for now. But just the um, main thing is that, you know, you've got those options there. So type in the distance 8500 mil or 40 bricks, whichever way you decide to do it. And again, Plans Express places that next um, point. So we can continue in this way. So we can press the left arrow key. And assuming this wall is the same length as the first one we drew, let's type in 10,500 mil. Press the return key on your keyboard to enter that distance in. And then we can finish off by um, clicking back on the start point, or there's another shortcut key you can use. If you look at the command window instruction, it's telling you you can use the C key to close your walls. So if you click the C key on your keyboard, that will close whatever you're drawing. OK, Scott, I can see you're asking, how do you get the measurement box up? So once you've um, clicked to place your first length of wall, you should be able to click the arrow key to get the distance dialog box popping up. Is that not coming up on your screen when you do it? So you click to place the first point of your walls, then you press the relevant arrow key on your keyboard. It's, that's working okay, cool, thank you, glad to hear it. Okay, so I'm just gonna cancel out of that for now. I don't want to continue drawing this wall so I can press the escape key on my keyboard. Escape drops the tool that you're using. Okay, so we've used a, a few different shortcut keys there. We've used the arrow keys for entering the dimensions of the walls and we've used the C key to complete the walls. So let's just have another go at doing that, just for argument's sake. We don't obviously have to start on the top left. You could start at the bottom right of your walls. So if you click the uh, right mouse button, remember, whenever you click the, the right mouse button, that will um, prompt Plans Express to do the same action. So whatever you've just done, it will get ready to do the same thing again. So we could start um, drawing at the, the bottom right, for example. Let's say we want to go up. Just draw another rectangle, whatever dimensions you want to type in of a fairly typical house. So type in the distance, press the return key on your keyboard, press across, so across to the left, say 10 meters wide, 10,000 meters, 10,000 mil. And then at this point, you could press the, the S key, couldn't you, to square off your walls. So using those shortcut keys, it obviously speeds up your work. OK, and just to recap, um, if you make a mistake, you can undo and redo uh, what you've just done using the arrows at the very top of the screen. Alternatively, we have some shortcut keys for undoing and redoing. You might be familiar with them because they are standard window shortcut keys. So if you make a mistake and you want to undo an action, you can use Control and Z. So you hold down Control, then press the Z key. That will undo what you've just done. Control and Z undoes the, undoes the last action. So that's the undo shortcut key, Control and Z. To redo the last action, you can hold down Control and Y. Control and Y will redo the last thing that you've done. Okay. Control and Z to undo, Control and Y to redo. Those are a couple of shortcut keys that aren't on the guide, actually. So you might want to make a, a, a note of those at the bottom. Control and Z to undo, Control and Y to redo. OK, and there's one more really important shortcut key um, that I would like to introduce you to at this point, and that is the R key. Now, the R key allows you to place a new item on screen relative to um, an existing point. So for example, say this is um, a house I've drawn here. Maybe I want to draw the garage and I'm going to um, mark, I'm going to draw it relative to the corner of the back of the house. So to do that, I can use the R key. So right click to draw the same type of wall again. We're just going to assume it's the same spec of wall. I know it might not necessarily be a cavity wall for your garage. 
but just, just to show you the principles of using the R key. So whatever um, rectangle of walls you've got, it doesn't matter which one, hover your cursor over the back corner of the wall until you locate that end point. And then press um, the R key on your keyboard. When you press the R key, you'll see these dimensions appear. The dimensions are telling us um, the position of the cursor relative to that endpoint that we hovered the cursor over. So um, it's linking the endpoint with your cursor. So you could just do it by eye. You could um, say, I want the garage to be six meters back and two meters across, you could do it by eye. Um, alternatively, you can use the arrow keys again to tell the software where you want to place uh, the first point of the walls. So let's say we want to place it um, behind the house. So we're going to press the up arrow key. And let's say we want to place it three meters from that end point on the, the back corner of the house. So type in the distance in millimeters, click OK or press the return key on your keyboard. And Plans Express has located that, that point at 3,000 mil, so three meters from the back of our house. We can then continue drawing our garage walls um, as we want to. So let's say the garage is six meters long, so I'm going to press the up arrow again. I'm going to type in Um, 6,000 mil, I'm going to click OK. And then let's say it's three meters wide. Type in the distance, click OK or return. And then we could press the S key on the keyboard to complete that loop of walls. OK, so the main thing there was we were using the R key to uh, place a new point on the screen relative to um, an existing snap point on something that we've already drawn. So we've talked about how you can finish doing an action using the escape key. Um, if you wanted to resume doing that, that same thing, so if I just undo the last thing I've done. So say I'd partly drawn these walls and I'd press the escape key. If I wanted to start drawing my walls again, I can right click to tell Plans Express I want to do the same action again. I want to draw the same spec of walls. I can then continue where I left off. So find the endpoint on those walls and then I can carry on drawing. So um, you can see here at the moment it's in dimension mode because it's showing me dimensions. If I want to switch to snap mode, I can press this button at the bottom right of the drawing screen. If you hover your cursor over it, it will tell you what its name is. So this is snap snap mode. So if I turn to snap mode, that allows me to click to um, hover over or click onto snap points on the screen. So I'm going to find that end point, move my cursor to the right, hold down the shift key to make my wall straight. And you'll see this time Plans Express is using the Y coordinate from that endpoint to place uh, the wall I'm drawing. And then I can click onto the endpoint again to finish it off. So you can pick up again. If you're partway through a wall, you make a mistake, um, you need to finish what you're doing and then uh, pick up the wall specification again and carry on. That's, uh, that's perfectly um, doable. Use the right click to start drawing walls of the same spec. Make sure you're in snap mode so you can click onto the snap point on the existing wall and, and continue onwards. Of course, you could then carry on using your arrow keys if you wanted to enter the dimensions that way. OK, so the escape key drops the tool you're using. So I'm going to press escape now because the software is ready to draw more walls. So I'm going to press escape to stop and right click to redo something of the same spec. OK, so to tidy up our drawing page now, because we've finished playing around, we're going to delete all of the items on screen. So draw a selection box. I'm going to go left to right. I'm going to encompass all of those walls I've drawn. 
release the left mouse button once they're all within the selection box and then click the delete key on your keyboard. That will delete all of those items. OK, so we're now going to move on to exercise four, which is all about drawing construction lines. Now, um, construction lines can be used to help you set out elements of your design. So you may want to use construction lines as a reference for, for drawing the overall footprint of your building, so for, for laying out your external walls. You may want to use construction lines for creating a drainage layout, for example, or a landscaping layout. So construction lines um, have millions of different applications, uh, depending on, on what it is that you're doing. But, but fundamentally, what they help you do is set out some key dimensions that you can use as anchor points for whatever you're drawing. So hopefully in your um, supporting documents pack, um, you've got the diagram associated with exercise four. I think it was on page four of the document. So if you can refer to that, that will help you with the exercise we're going to do now. So to find the construction line tools, you need to go to the drawing and annotation tab. So if you click drawing and annotation, and in the middle of this tab, we've got all of the construction line tools. So when you're setting out the external walls of a house, you're usually just going to be using horizontal and vertical construction lines nine times out of 10, unless you live in one of the one of those unusual 45 degree angled houses like I do here, actually, which is a bit more interesting to lay out. OK, so um, what we're going to do is we're going to start by selecting the horizontal construction line tool. So if you click where it says horizontal in the construction line center uh, section, of the toolbar. Once you've selected a construction line, you'll see that you are holding the construction line with your cursor. And all you need to do is click to place it. The command window is telling you to give the point, so it's telling you to click on the point where you want to place it. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to place this first construction line at the top of the drawing page. This is where on the top left corner of our page, we're going to lay out our ground floor plans. If you have a look at the main house design, um, also in your supporting documents pack, you'll see uh, how we're going to lay out the drawing page. So that might be helpful. So place your cursor near the top left of the drawing page. Doesn't matter exactly where, um, but near the, near the top and then click the left mouse button to place that construction line. When you place the construction line, it turns blue. You'll see the software is ready to place another construction line, so it will place multiple construction lines in one go. But what we're going to do now is we're going to select the vertical construction line tool instead. So go back to the drawing and annotation tab and click the vertical construction line. And that will select the vertical tool. And again, we're just going to place uh, one construction line on the, this will lay out where the left hand side of our ground floor plan is going to go. So we're going to place this to the left of the drawing page, a similar distance from the border as the horizontal construction line was. And then again, just press, pr press the left mouse button to place that vertical construction line. So now we've got those first two construction lines in place, we're going to place some more construction lines measuring from the construction lines that are already on place uh, on screen in place. So first of all, we want to place another vertical construction line 4330 mil to the right of that first construction line. Refer to your um, diagram on page four. That gives you all the dimensions for, for setting out the construction lines. So to place um, a line relative to an existing construction line, you'll remember to place anything relative to something on screen, we need to press the R key. So if you hover your cursor over that first uh, vertical construction line, you'll see uh, a message pops up saying nearest. So we found a nearest snap point on that line. It means our cursor is snapping to the construction line. If nearest doesn't appear on screen, it may be that you need to switch nearest snap on. So at the top right of your screen, you'll see there's a button with uh, parallel um, 
diagonal lines with two circles on, that's the nearest snap button. So you can click that to switch on nearest snap. And then if you place your cursor over that construction line, you should see nearest pops up. We're not clicking onto the construction line, by the way, at this point, we're just hovering our cursor over it. We then need to press the R key on our keyboard. So you press the R key. So remember R stands for relative. So when you press R, it allows you to place one item relative to another on screen. So uh, Plans Express is now giving us dimension lines which tell us the, the distance from that nearest snap point that we snapped to, to the, the position of our cursor. Now we can use the arrow keys uh, to tell Plans Express where we want to place the next construction line. So press the right arrow key on your keyboard. That tells Plans Express we want to place it to the right of uh, the snap point that we hovered over. So in the distance dialog box, we're going to type in 4,330 as per the diagram. Remember the figures are given in millimeters. Click OK to confirm the distance or press the return key as we were doing before. And you'll see the Plans Express has placed that second construction line 4,330 milliliter. <laughs> 4,330 millimetres rather to the right of that first vertical construction line. Now, after entering a dimension, the software returns to dimension mode. So if, um, if you try to snap to those construction lines, you can't do it now because it's in um, dimension mode, not in snap mode. Snap mode allows us to um, snap onto existing points on the drawing. So to go back to snap mode, you'll see the snap button at the bottom right of the drawing area. It's those four green arrows pointing to a square. Click on that to switch on snap mode again. And now you can see that you can find that nearest snap point on the um, construction line that we've just drawn. So what we're going to do is continue placing the construction lines um, as per the uh, diagram that you've got there. So we've got another construction line, which is 1,670 millimetres to the right of the one we've just drawn. So I'll show you how to do this one, and then I'll um, give you a minute to do the last um, couple of construction vertical construction lines. So hover your cursor over the construction line we've just drawn, find that nearest snap point, press the R key on your keyboard to indicate that placing a construction line relative to that one. Again, press the right arrow key on your keyboard. This next one is 1670 mil to the right. Click OK to register that that's where that next vertical construction line is going to go. So we've got two more construction lines to place. One is 4050 mil to the right. And then we've got another which is 450 mil to the right of that. So I'll give you a minute to um, see if you can do that by yourselves because that's a, a sequence of um, hovering your mouse, pressing the, the appropriate shortcut key, um, that sequence of things that you need to remember. So I'll give you a moment to do that, see if you can do it independently. And um, then I'll catch up with you in one minute and um, go through it, show you how I've done it on my end and you can let me know whether you've, whether you've managed it. I'll just go through it uh, one more time, just in case anyone needs a recap of the sequence. So I've made sure snap mode is on by pressing the um, snap button. You can see you can also press the F7 key on your keyboard to switch on snap mode. Hover my cursor until I find that nearest snap button. Press the R key. Then press an arrow key to indicate where I want the line to go, the construction line to go. Type in the distance. 4050, place the construction line. Okay, I'm ready to go again. I need to switch on snap mode, hover my cursor over the nearest snap point, R key, right mouse button, type in the distance, 450 mil, click OK. And then once you've drawn all of those construction lines, you can press the escape key on your keyboard. You can see we're starting to create a grid which we will then use to um, click onto to, to place our external walls. So I'm going to zoom in slightly on the top left hand corner of my screen. So I'm going to place my cursor over to the top left and scroll towards the screen. That will help me zoom in. So I've now got a couple of other um, horizontal construction lines to add. 
So to do that, we click the horizontal construction line button as before. So we're going to place a horizontal construction line 1000 mil before the, the top horizontal construction line. So repeat the process as before, hover your cursor over the nearest, over the horizontal construction line, locate that nearest snap point, press the R key. This time we're going to press the down arrow key because the next line is below the first one we've drawn. Type in a thousand mil. Of course here you can use brick lengths as well um, if you want to do it that way. Click OK to register that distance and then we've got one more no, we haven't. We've got two more construction lines to do, just re referring to the drawing myself. So click back onto snap mode. The next line is 8,500 mil below. So locate the nearest snap point, press the R key, press the down arrow, 8,500. Click OK. And then I'm going to drag the screen up upwards a little bit by holding down my mouse scroll wheel to do that. And then again, this time I'm going to press the F7 key on the keyboard to switch on snap mode. So sometimes when you're drawing, you're going to want to work in dimension mode. A lot of the time you're going to want snap mode on. So F7 is the quickest way to switch that on. And the last construction line is 1,350 mil below this one. So find the nearest snap point. Press the R key, down key, 1350, and press return for the quickest way to do it. OK. Press the escape key to drop your con uh, horizontal constriction line. And that's the layout of your um, construction lines so that you're ready to draw your external walls. Now we've got a couple of other construction line tools which are really handy to know about. So within the construction lines section of the drawing and annotation tab, we've got a button called toggle visibility. So click that button and you'll see what it does. It probably should be called switch, switch sorry, show stroke hide construction lines because that's what it does. If you click on it again, it will show the construction lines again. If you click it once more, it will hide them. So at certain stages while you're drawing, you might want to switch those off, but not delete them altogether. So you can click toggle visibility and that will hide them. It makes your drawing look tidier if you're um, focusing in on a different um, detail within your drawing, you might want to switch them off. However, of course, you can delete all of your construction lines. So um, once your design is complete and you want to um, print your drawing, you can delete the construction lines. And there is the delete button. So don't click it now. Um, click the delete button to delete all of the construction lines. Of course, you can also select and delete individual construction lines if you want to. So if, um, for example, I wanted to del delete this top construction line, to do that, draw a selection box. Well, you can either click on it, but sometimes it's a, it's a bit tricky to actually, because it's such a thin line, it can be a bit tricky to click on it. So you can also draw a selection box. If you draw a right to left selection box, that's usually how I select a construction line. And then you'll never, you won't miss it doing it that way. So you can either click on it. If you zoomed in, it's easier to, to click directly onto it. Or you can draw a right to left selection box to select it. You'll see a handle appears in the middle. Then you can press the delete key on your keyboard if you want to get rid of it. So that's the way to delete an individual line or to delete them all, press the delete button and that saves you having to select them all. The software will automatically select and delete the wall. OK, so these construction lines are the beginning of our project because we're going to use them to lay out our external walls. So we're now going to save the project. Um, and we do that by going to the file menu. So pinky coloured button with a document on it. Hover your cursor over save and then click save as from the menu. Um, 
In fact, I'm just going to click the save button and save it as Upton Fields 1 because it was a blank drawing, wasn't it, when we first saved it? So that's fine. We can just click save. It'll ask, do you want to replace it? I'm going to click yes because I know I'm not overwriting any work or losing any work. That's fine. But in subsequent, subsequent saves, so when you do more drawing and you've added to your drawing, you will want to save it with a, a different name. And then, as I said before, if you make a mistake or you want to make a design change, you can go back and retrace your steps and you'll have the drawing saved at various stages, which can be really um, useful if you need to make those kinds of changes. OK, so that is module one. Uh, complete. So hopefully you're now feeling really confident using your mouse and you're beginning to use those shortcut keys to, to speed up your drawing. Um, as I said, those skills that you've learned there, you will use them um, day in, day out when you're designing with Plans Express. So it's really important to get those the foundations in place with those basic mouse and keyboard skills. Do you guys we could make a make a start on module two. We could draw our external walls. Um, is that something you'd like to do? Because we have got a few more minutes um, and we've made quite good progress. So, um, OK, cool. Well, it will only take, I don't know, another 10 or 15 minutes to do our external walls. So we'll make a start on module two. So in module two, you'll learn how to draw your ground floor plans. So you'll have the chance to specify and draw your external walls, your internal walls, doors, windows, stairs and the ground floor slab. And I'll also show you how to navigate the 3D preview. So we'll make a start on exercise five, which is all about drawing the external walls. So if you've laid out construction lines as we have, um, you're ready to start drawing the footprint of your design. And it's actually a really simple process. So in this particular exercise, you'll learn how to select a type and specification of external wall, how to input your foundation details, your wall height and so on, and how to draw the walls by clicking on the intersection points um, on the construction lines that we've already drawn. So hopefully you've got a diagram um, showing you how to draw the external walls. So I think that's on page five of the document that you've got there. So if you can refer to that so you've got an idea of the layout of the walls that would be really helpful okay so um specifying the, the external walls to start with them so you'll know of course that we go to the architectural tab and uh, we need the external wall drop down menu so we're going to click on the bottom of it where it says external and we've got the drop down arrow there that allows us to select a uh, a wall template and and set out the specification of the wall Remember, if you click on the icon at the top, that simply selects the wall specification that you last used. So we want to select brick and block cavity wall again. That's the type of wall we're using on this occasion. Of course, you might be selecting um, an external cavity block wall for a rendered wall. You might be selecting a stone face cavity uh, block wall. We've also got ICF and SIPS walls in there. So hover your cursor over brick and block cavity wall, and then you get a list of templates opening up. Um, so we have various different templates set up with different wall heights. Some of them are multi-story templates and some of them are single story templates. What we mean by multi-story is that it will add 225 mil onto the wall height for the floor above. So for example, a 2.475 high floor to joist floor to joist height wall, which is multi-storey, will actually be 2.7 metres tall overall because it will include the thickness of the floor above. So what we want to do is select that one actually, select the one that's five lines from the bottom, ground floor cavity wall for 2.475 high floor to joist height multi-storey template. So click on that template to select it. That will determine the wall height, which is obviously important when we're drawing our plans. It will um, impact on the uh, elevations of the drawing. So when you select your wall template, the brick and block cavity wall dimension wizard will open up. Um, so here we want to have a look at the wall height. Double check that we're happy with it. 
and we can also check the thickness of each leaf so we can see the external leaf thickness and the internal leaf thickness and if you need to you could tweak them at this point um, an important note here is um, if you don't intend to estimate your design so if you're not using estimator express in tandem with plans express you only need to define the dimensions which are highlighted in yellow so only the dimensions highlighted in yellow, so the wall height, leaf thicknesses and so on, are required to draw your plans and your elevations. The white dimension box, such as this one here, where it says height of coursing blocks, that is only needed for estimating purposes. So therefore, if you aren't going to import your drawing into Estimator Express to estimate the job, you can ignore the white input boxes altogether. So for this training course, we're focusing on the dimensions that we need to draw the design because this is just a standalone Plans Express course. So we're just going to focus on the yellow input boxes and we're going to skip over the white ones. But of course, if you're working on jobs in the future that you are planning to estimate, then you will want to review the white input boxes as well because you're starting to specify some of the options uh, for your estimate as well. OK, so if we're happy with the, the wall height, and um, leaf thicknesses, we can click next, and then we can have a look at the foundation details. So the important dimension here for your drawing is the foundation width. That's highlighted in yellow as the foundations are shown on your plans when you're working in detail mode. Um, so you can change the, the foundation width if you need to. We're going to leave these set to the default values for now. Then we can click next. So the next screen uh, deals with the footing details. You'll see we've got a couple of important uh, inputs here. We've got the cavity width. If you place your cursor over an input box, it will tell you what the dimension is referring to. So the cavity width before, uh, below ground is set to 100 mil. And the other important dimension for your plans and your drawing is the splash course, splash course depth, because that will show on the elevations. Um, so let's say we're going to change the cavity width here to 140 mil because we are working to um, part L regs. Using the elemental recipe, we need a, a thicker cavity insulation in there. So set your, your cavity width to 140 mil. We'll leave the splash course depth as it is at 150 mil. Then we'll click next. The final page deals ex exclusively with finishing options, which are only relevant if you are estimating. So for now, we're going to skip over those. But again, if you are planning to estimate uh, this job, then you want, would want to review the plastering and decoration options for your walls. So once you've done that, you can click Finish. And you'll see Plans Express is now ready to start drawing your walls. So remember when you're drawing any of your building components, refer to the command window and the instructions will explain how to draw or insert each part of your design. Um, most things are very intuitive, but if you're drawing something like a roof, then those step-by-step -step instructions, I still refer to them now when I'm drawing a roof, um, just as a, a prompt to the sequence that I need to do things in. So um, don't forget to, to look there uh, as you're doing your drawing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to click around our construction lines, uh, placing the corners of our external walls. So if you hover your cursor over where the first um, vertical construction line and um, horizontal construction line meet, you should find an intersection point. So an intersection point is just where two lines meet on the drawing page. So this is going to be the top left corner of our uh, design. So we're going to place this first corner point on our uh, drawing. So once you've found that intersection point, just click the left mouse button. Remember, we click and release. We don't hold down the left mouse button. So we've got a couple of lines that have appeared here that I haven't spoken to you about yet. Um, the red line on the wall indicates um, which side of the wall you are placing with your mouse clicks. So my mouse is currently placing that top point of the wall. The arrow identifies the external side of the wall. 
So you can see the external side of the wall is going to be facing um, upwards. So that, that that's correct at the moment for the, the orientation that I'm drawing my walls in. If I was drawing in this direction, you can see that the uh, external side is on the wrong side. It's pointing into the house. So depending on where you start your walls and the di direction that you're drawing them in, you need to check the, the external side. Um, and the uh, justification of the wall, i.e. Which, which side of the wall you're placing is correct. So when you're drawing your walls, you'll notice uh, a set of uh, different set of tools appear on the, the ribbon at the top of the screen. The important um, options here that we need to look at are the justification and the external side. So from here, you can change the external side of the wall by selecting right or left from the drop down box. So just have a play around with doing that. Select the, the other option from the external side drop down box and you'll see the arrow changes indicating which side um, is the external side of your wall. You can also change the external side of your wall using a shortcut key on your keyboard. You can press the F, F for flip key on your keyboard. So if you press F, that does exactly the same thing as the drop down box does. It changes the external side of your wall. So using that drop down box or the F key, make sure the external side of your wall is in the correct position. So the other option is the justification. So as I said, the justification drop down box tells Plans Express which side of the wall to place with your mouse clicks. So select the other justification options so you can see what's going on there. So you can place the center of the wall with your clicks. You can place the right hand side of the wall with your clicks, or you can place the left hand side of the wall with your clicks. Again, the just justification depends on where you start placing your walls and the direction you're um, drawing in. So each time you'll just need to check those options. So in the justification drop down box, make sure the justification is set to left and make sure your external side is set to left as well. And then um, we have those um, options correctly set. Scott, I've just noticed your note there, you're saying you don't have that box. Are you saying you don't have the drop down boxes? as you're drawing. I should say uh, there's also a shortcut key for justification as well. Um, if you press the J key on your keyboard, J stands for justification, you can change the justification of your walls. Okay, so are the shortcut keys working for you, Scott? I'm just trying to um, work out, are you still in the process of drawing your walls? Because these, these tools only become available as you're in the process of drawing. Um, so if you are drawing, they should be there. Justification, mm, the shortcut keys aren't working either. Okay, what I suggest you do is press the escape key on your keyboard to drop any tool that you're using. If you're draw in the middle of drawing the wall, that's fine. Drop that tool, click the right, the right mouse button to start, to start drawing your wall again. We'll just start the process again, just in case um, we've missed something. So place that first corner point on the top left of the construction lines on that intersection point. So we started drawing the wall again, and then hopefully the, the wall tools will pop up. Okay. So now, of course, we need to um, place the subsequent points of our walls. So it can help to zoom in uh, on the drawing page as you do this. So use your scroll wheel on your mouse to zoom in and out. Um, refer to the diagram um, as you go along. And um, click on the various intersection points to draw the footprint of, of, the, of the design. So hover your cursor over the next intersection point. You might find a perpendicular point that just tells us it's um, perpendicular to the first point that we placed. So whether it says perpendicular or intersection, either of those snap points is absolutely fine. 
Remember, if dimension lines appear at any point, you need to click onto snap mode. You can use the snap button to do that. But hopefully you can see the intersection points. So click on that next intersection or perpendicular point to place the first length of wall. And then following the diagram, we can see we need to come down to the next intersection point and then click again to place the le next length of wall. Now we're going to come over to the far vertical construction line, find the intersection point again, click to place the next point on the walls. You might need to drag your drawing page up. You can do that even when you're in the middle of drawing your walls. If you click and hold down the scroll wheel, you can move the drawing page up and it won't affect anything you're drawing. So you can use the scroll wheel to drag the page around as you're drawing. So we're going to come down to the second from bottom horizontal construction line, find the intersection point, click and place. I think you're probably getting the, the hang of this now. So following the diagram as a road map, finding each of the intersectional perpendicular points. Click to place each corner of the building. Remember, we can press the C key to close the walls. You can even press the S key when you're on that. Um, when you've got two sides of the building left to do, you can press the S key and it would square your walls off. OK, so as long as you can follow the construction lines, um, you can see how easy it is to place those walls. The key thing to remember is to check. I've just clicked back on one of my walls so you can see these wall settings here. Make sure your justification is correct and your external side is correct before you place um, the second point on your walls. So make sure you're placing them where you want them to be. Now you can check your walls have been drawn correctly using the 3D preview. So this 3D preview has been patiently building up every time we've drawn something. Um, so you might need to click on the 3D view tab to make it visible on screen. Remember, if it is hiding, you can always go to the views and 3D tab and click the 3D preview button. And that will bring that window uh, to the fore. So, of course, we can navigate our, our way around this 3D model here. Um, so to drag the model around, we can hold down the left mouse button and move our cursor to look at the the uh, walls from a different angle. So hold down your left mouse button and you're dragging the model around. So you can turn it around completely and have a look at the back. Bring it back to the front. You can look from the bottom, look from the top. And you can zoom out using the scroll wheel on your mouse. So in exactly the same way as you do on your plans, scroll in to zoom in. Um, so, so sorry, scroll, scroll towards the screen to zoom in, scroll away from the screen to, to scroll out, to zoom out. So you can look at your design from different angles. You might have noticed there are different modes. So at the moment we're looking at solid display mode. You can also click textured display mode and then we can see our bricks. So um, what I was saying was that you can check your walls have been drawn correctly using the 3D preview. Um, it's very easy to draw your walls inside out if you don't get your external wall uh, side correct. And th that will show up immediately on your 3D view. So if, for example, I draw another wall here, my uh, external walls I can see here are inside out. And if we have a look at the preview, of course, that becomes instantly obvious because I can see the plaster on the outside and the brickwork on the inside. So your 3D preview is a really good way of just checking that things look right and that you haven't made any mistakes as you go along. OK, so I'm going to delete those walls. So I've done a left to right selection box because I only want to select those walls that are entirely enclosed. If I did a right to left selection box, it would also select the construction lines underneath and I don't want to delete those. 
So this is why thinking about which kind of selection box you want to use is really handy. So I've deleted uh, those extra walls that I've drawn. If you want to get your design back to its original starting point, you can always click this home button at the top of the 3D view window. And that um, brings your 3D model back to its, its front view, to its front elevation. OK, so once you've drawn your, your walls, this is a good time to save again. So we can go to the file menu. We can click save and then save as. And this time I'm going to call it Upton Fields 2 and I'm going to save it. So the first version of it is saved with just my construction lines. The second version has the external walls as well. So hopefully you guys are starting to get the hang of that. Um, we're going to be doing lots more drawing, lots more placing walls and other elements during the next session. So hopefully the more you practice it, um, the more intuitive it will become. If you need to spend a bit more time going over this module again in your own time, then please, please do that. Um, you will reap the benefits of it for sure. OK, so. Um, Let's do a quick uh, quiz just to recap some of the things we have uh, covered today. The quiz questions, I just get um, a percentage of people who've answered. I don't know who's answering or what they've said. So it's completely anonymous. It's all a bit, it's just a, a bit of fun and it's just to, to allow me to go over some of the key points that we've been through today. Um, so if you'd like to take part, that would be brilliant. So we've got four questions, so it won't take long. So the first question is, what can I use the mouse scroll wheel for? And you can select any uh, statements which you think are correct. So can I use the scroll mouse wheel, the mouse scroll wheel rather, for dragging the drawing page, also known as panning? Can I use the mouse scroll wheel for selecting an item on screen? Can I, using it, can I use it for zooming in and out of the drawing? Can I use it for drawing a perpendicular walls? So if you click any you think apply, or all that apply, what can the scroll wheel on the mouse be used for? Okay, the correct answers are number one, dragging the drawing page around. So you hold down the scroll wheel to drag your drawing page around. And number three is also correct. You obviously use it for zooming in and out of the drawing page. And you saw at the end as well, actually, you can zoom in and out of the 3D preview and you can move the 3D preview around by dragging. So you can use the scroll wheel in, this, in a very similar way on the 3D preview. Um, OK, so let's move on to our next question. OK, so question two, I want to draw or place an item relative to another item on screen. Which shortcut key should I use? Should I use the S key, the C key, the R key, or the Shift key? Which of those keys allows you to place an item relative to another item on screen? OK, all of the answers I've had are correct. There's obviously a, a clue in the name. So for the relative tool, use the R key. So R stands for relative. So that's really handy if you want to lay something out, place something relative to another item that you've already drawn. So that's great. OK, question number three. OK, this is a really important one. I want to locate a snap point on an item on screen, but Plans Express is showing dimensions, not snap points. What should I do? So you can select one of these. Should I press the F7 key on the keyboard? Should I click the snap button on screen or should I do either of the above? OK, so the correct answer is either of the above. So the snap button on screen, absolutely, you can use that to switch on snap mode. A quick way to do it as well is to press F7. F7 is the equivalent of the snap button on your keyboard. So either of those ways. But the, the important thing is to remember, if you're trying to do something and you can't do it because the dimensions are coming up, not snap points, then you need to switch on snap mode. It's an easy thing to forget that one. OK, and I think we've got one more question. 
I think we're finishing with an easy one actually. Which tab can I find the construction line tools on? So if you want to draw a construction line, which tab do you go to? The architectural tab, the drawing and annotation tab, the views and 3D tab, or modify and selection tab. Okay, the answers we've had in our correct ones so it is the drawing and annotation tab so the architectural tab contains all of your construction items that you're going to want to draw on screen the drawing and annotation tab allows you to draw um, lines and arrows construction lines other things uh, like notes that you might want to add so you can add text to your drawing using that tab views and 3ds uh, views and 3d tab that deals with the windows that are available on screen, uh, looking at different views of your drawing, uh, and so on. Modify and selection, that tab we haven't actually looked at yet, that allows you to edit things on screen. So if you want to copy an item or you want to stretch an item, that allows you to modify items on screen in, in lots of different ways. Okay, so well done with that. It looks like it's all gone in really well today. So thank you for um, answering those questions for me. So um, that rounds up um, module one. Um, our next session then is on Thursday. It's at 10 o'clock again, 10 till 12 roughly is the uh, running time for that session. Um, when I say roughly, it will start at 10, but it, <laughs> it might finish a few minutes early or it might overrun by a few minutes, depending on how we, how we get on. Um, if you've got any questions in the meantime, then please get in touch with um, tech support. So you can call the tech support team or you can email them. The email address is support at hpxl.co.uk. If you've got a bit of time to have a go at practicing doing some of the things that we've worked on today, that would be great. As I said, we will email over the recording of today's session so you can pick up on any bits that you missed or recap anything uh, you would like to in your own time. Um, so in the meantime, have a, have a good afternoon and good day tomorrow. And I look forward to catching up with you on Thursday. OK, guys, I shan't take any more of your time. Thanks for your hard work this morning. And uh, I look, look forward to speaking to you on Thursday. Cheers. <laughs>